Um, yeah, so for, uh, yeah, so we're the stereo zombies and for our uh, machine learning project, we decided to make a, uh, a AI movie description generator. Um, so yeah, this is our website. So let's just introduce the team first. Um, so firstly, we had Wesley who unfortunately uh, wasn't able to make it to this presentation. Uh, I'm Daniel, uh, I'm from Toronto. I enjoy programming, board games and walking my dogs. Uh, and I learned a lot working on this project. Uh, hi, I'm David. I'm from Montgomery County in Maryland. Uh, I enjoy competitive programming and maths, and I also lead my school's computer club. Hello, I'm Om Sharma. I'm from Nittig, Massachusetts. Um, I like programming, reading, and playing tennis. Um, sometimes I play video games or, or watch YouTube, and, and a hobby that I have is learning cool things from that. Uh, my name is Gabriel Leonard. Uh, I come from Queens, New York City, and I enjoy programming, ch swimming, chess, and soccer. And I enjoy playing video games in my free time and aim to get into prestigious schools such as MIT. Um, I'm Brandon Tong. I'm a rising sophomore at Stuyvesant High School. Some things I enjoy are fencing and debate. I learned a lot from this project as well. Uh, and then, of course, we have Sharath, who was our instructor. Uh, couldn't have made this project without him, and we learned a lot. So thank you, Sharath. Um, so now let's go to about, and we'll talk a little bit about our model. Uh, so with our project, we used a variety of tools. Uh, most prominently displayed here are AI Text Gen, GPT Neo, and GPT Neo. Um, AI Text Gen is a Python package that uses the PyTorch and Transformers libraries and is specifically optimized for causal language modeling using GPT-2's architecture. Uh, it provides the generate function, which gives you massive control over the text generated and also just simplifies debugging API calls and parallelization of text generation. Uh, the model we loaded onto AI text gen is called GPT-Neo and it's developed by a company called Eleuther AI. Uh, it's, it was created in response to OpenAI's GPT-3 and although it's not identical to GPT-3, it functions in a very similar manner and its performance is near identical to GPT-3 and is actually even better than GPT-3 ADA. Uh, for our training model, we use datasets found on Kaggle and GitHub and web scraped a bit as well. Um, and for our final models, we train them on uh, Google Colab's GPUs. For our first week, we um, Python's libraries and neural networks. On the first week, we in were introduced to machine learning concepts and learned how to generate text using pre-trained model models to get ready to build the project. On our second week, on Wednesday and Thursday, we did data compilation and the first models. And we first scored the web for appropriate data sets, wrote scripts to clean the data, and manipulated it into a form which our model could be trained on. Then we use the models on Google Colab and Kaggle using their GPU clusters to speed up the training process. On Friday, we finalized our model for generating a movie description based on a prompt and began working on a model for generating an entire movie plot. This consisted of steps very similar to the step you previously took to train the movie description model. On the last week, week three, we developed our website. After, after starting with a bootstrap template, we learned how to program an HTML so that we could make the website you're currently looking at. So when we made our mom models, each member took a different data set and trained an individual model for each person. At, then after a substantial amount of training, we took the lot, the best model and used that as our model. Yeah, so just to uh, reiterate on that, um, at the beginning of week two, uh, each of us began collecting our own data um, and created our own models based on that data. Um, so what this allowed us to do is have a bunch of similar models, um, all trained with different hyperparameters and slightly different variations of data. Uh, and eventually, uh, out of those models that we trained, we picked the best one, uh, and that's the one that's currently being hosted on the website. Um, so let's just enter a prompt. Um, let's say, 
uh, for example. So we have a uh, temperature slider, uh, which allows us to control the uh, temperature like variance in the text. Uh, and then you can enter a prompt here, uh, press submit, something descriptive. It takes a while to uh, generate text. Uh, something interesting about this final model uh, is that we actually cut back the data size significantly. So originally we thought that the more data that we would get, uh, the stronger model would be in generating cohesive sentences. But we ended up actually uh, picking uh, one of the models that was trained on the least data. And what we realized was that the data that was used in this model was a lot higher quality, even though it was uh, significantly fewer in numbers, uh, which resulted in much better results. Um, so here we go, it generated uh, five, uh, movie descriptions based on the prompt. Um, so yeah, so you can uh, kind of see how one of our main goals was to try to get the sentences to be coherent. Well, A, make them grammatically correct and not have any made up words. So B, make them, uh, you know, make the text that the AI generates relate to the text that is prompted by the user. Um, so as we can see here, it accomplishes that in several examples. Uh, prominently here, it says, uh, in the prompt, we put murdered, serial murderer, uh, we have mis by mysterious forces, um, uh, killer, evil plot, uh, and overall, there's like several different uh, unique options here uh, that all incorporate the theme of uh, somebody being murdered. Um, so yeah, and uh, there's like, you can enter any prompt and it'll generate something that's uh, tailored to what uh, you enter into it. So yeah, that's uh, that's our uh, model generation. We had quite a few limitations when we were implementing this project. The first of which was training the models without crashing our computers, because I think Daniel had to train his model on his local machine. Otherwise, it would be way too slow. Um, some of these models were trained with like 10,000 plus epics, and they took as long as three hours. Um, another limitation was the model we used itself because we don't have access to GPT-3. And um, sometimes the model will say something that doesn't make sense, like gentle murder or miss a little bit on the grammar. But I think we did a good job working around that. Um, in terms of expanding our product in the future, we can do things like specify the genre or generate an entire plot or generate the description of a video game. Now that we sort of have a general idea of what to do, we can actually expand this further going forward. Thank you for listening.